Welcome to Blender Frenzy. I am Justin, and about a month ago, I got a comment on my YouTube channel from Jordan, who is having trouble importing footage into Blender and making the frames per second match up with the length of the strips in Blender's video sequence editor. And so here is his question. Jordan says, I really need some help here. I can't find a specific fix for my problem anywhere. When I import a lo longer video at the default 30 frames per second, the video and audio strips are the same length, but half of the audio strip is grayed out as if it were somehow shorter than the native file, while the video looks slow motion. If I change the frame rate to 59.94, the audio will sync, but then only half of my video will play in the editor, while the audio just keeps on trucking, and suddenly the audio strip itself is twice as long, and the video strip is the same length as the portion of the audio strip that is not grayed out. I want to use the software because I know it's powerful, but I am this close to going back to iMovie. <sighs> Shudder. <laughs> Is there a fix or a way to simply import video without splitting the audio from it so that it will simply stay in sync? Well, Jordan, yes there is, and this video is dedicated to answering that for you and anyone else who is having that problem. But first, I want to let you know about a video editing live stream I'm doing this weekend, just in a few days, where I will edit one of my upcoming tutorials. I've broken it up into three parts. You can see down here, part one is Friday, this coming Friday, August 12th at 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So you'll have to do the calculations for wherever you live in the world. Part two is the same day, but at 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And part three is the next day, August 13th at noon Central Daylight Time. I will put the live stream links in the description below so that you can bookmark them and get ready for them this weekend. But if you go to the, each of the live streams, you can see the breakdown of what I cover in each part. The reason there are three of them is because I'm starting from the very beginning and I'm going through my whole video editing process and how I edit, put together, and render one of my tutorials. And if you've come and if you give me a super chat for a question, I will do my best to answer your question. So keep that in mind and I hope you can join me this weekend. But for now, the short answer to Jordan's question was answered by 10 to 10, who said, it's very likely that your video has a variable frame rate. That's not currently supported by the VSC, and in parentheses, he says, but work is actually being done on this these days, which is cool. What you need to do is convert your video to a constant frame rate. Any GUI or FFmpeg can be used for this example handbrake, and then import it into Blender. Make sure that the frames per second of the video matches the Blender project frames per second, or else the audio will get a different duration than the video. And this is what Jordan did, and it did fix the problem. So there you go, that is your quick answer. And if you don't know what Handbrake is, it is a wonderful free tool. I will leave a link to it in the description. But I also gave Jordan an answer in video form where I go over the strip mechanics, how they operate within Blender's video sequence editor and how it relates to the frame rate. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Hey Jordan, thanks for your question. Um, I'm happy to help. Um, so um, I'm not sure why yours is... Um, thinking that it's 30 frames per second when it's actually 60 frames per second because your video is definitely 60 frames per second. Uh, it could be something that 10 to 10 said. Blender is recognizing uh, a different frame rate for your video because it's a variable frame rate. But uh, let me show, I can I can sort of replicate the problem here. I'm gonna change this, I'm gonna change this 30 frames per second for now. And then when I import the video for me, it knows that it's 23.98 frames per second. So it's going to automatically jump. Um, if I delete this and I pull in something that's 60 frames per second, it automatically knows. But um, I think that's because it's probably a constant frame rate. But I'm going to delete that and pull back in the first one here. So I'm going to show you some things that uh, will help uh, how you think about these and how you can solve these problems. So I'm going to pull this one in now, this 60 frames per second. And you can see that because I already had 23.98 frames, it's not gonna change this one. And uh, this looks like yours. Um, so I'm gonna show you kind of what's happening here. Let's uh, make that the end frame here. Um, this isn't grayed out, actually. This is the end of your audio. So there's a difference between container strips and the content itself. So for the example of the video, if I extend just this one out, you can see I'm extending the container out, but 
uh, I'm not extending the video. This doesn't lengthen the video. The video is just right here. That's what that's where the content is. Um, so if I scrub through here, you can see it just hangs on that last frame because it's just pulling that last frame all the way out. Um, so that's going to be really helpful. And you can actually see the content offset by coming up to your overlays and the drop down and selecting offsets. And then if I drag this inward, you can see here's the content right here. This is the offset. Um, that you got here. That's where the video ends. And if I even pull this from the start here too, you can see the offset from where it starts. If I pull this all the way out here, just to show you, so we've got the offset here where the video starts. Here's where the strip container starts. And here's where the strip container ends. If I press S to slide, you can slide the content within the container. So that's what's happening here. So if you want the container to match the content, select the strip, press Alt-O, and that will clear all of the offsets. And then you have this container. So what's happening with the audio is that it's stretching past here for some unknown reason, because it usually doesn't do that. But if I even attempt to grab this and move it, it's going to snap right back to where the content is, because you can't actually extend audio past its content, which again, I don't know why when you import it, it shows it. I think that may be a bug or something. Um, now you can pull this in and you can see where the content ends here, but you can't ever pull an audio past its content. So let's do that again. I'm just going to delete this and we're going to re-import this in here. Okay, let's bring this over here. And um, I'm just going to press Alt-O to clear the offset right away. That's the first thing you want to do. So now you can see there's a mismatch between the video. It's almost three times as long as the audio, which is why you're going to see the video going super slow and the audio is going to be at normal speed. Now the audio is always at normal speed because Blender doesn't have the ability to speed up or slow down audio in this way. There is a way to do it, but I'm not going to go into that here. So I'm just going to double check that we have this as cleared off our offsets too. So Alt-O just to make sure. So now if I switch back and forth between 23.98 and 60 frames per second, you can see now these two match and these two don't. So this means this is definitely 60 frames per second and this is definitely not 60 frames per second. I'm gonna delete this one and I'm gonna show you something also pretty important if I pull that one back in. Now you can see the offset here is showing which means we know that there's more audio here. But uh, by default, those offsets are off, so it appears just fine. But if I Empty play this, it's you can going see to show that the audio is fine, but I'm going super the center fast. of the empty is. So that's out of sync. So I guess that's the first thing you want to do is select everything, Alt-O, make sure all the offsets are cleared. You also want to make sure you refresh, which I think is Control-R for you. For me, it's just R. Oh no, it looks like it's Control R here too. So refresh all, Control R, and then you can play it. And I would um, also turn on the waveforms and let that load here so we can see the waveforms here. And I'm just gonna bring these up. Okay, and then let's just make sure that this matches. And if I just click with so those held down, here. sparklers or something, um, but we've got a start. A good start. Okay, so that is matching here. Now, if I wanted to also include both of these here to make them match, what I would need to do is add in with this one, select that one, shift A and add in an effect strip speed control. And then I would have to take the end of this and then just match it here. I can press control to snap to, to the end of that. Um, and see, now you see the content actually ends here. But with the speed control, it's actually going to automatically, if I select this, uh, it's automatically going to stretch uh, to the size of the strip here. So um, that should now In order play. to get that. But then we, if we want to change it a little, just fine. That That's normal now. So these now match. And I would have to do the opposite if it were the other way around. So uh, if we uh, get rid of that and Alt-O change this to 23.98. Now these match and these don't. So I would have to do the same thing and then add in an effect strip speed control and then just bring this down here like that. And yeah. then those would match. Um, you can see I can go a little bit slower. And with the speed controls, it's actually a good uh, practice to get into the habit of um, putting them in a meta strip first. So select your video control G and then apply the speed control here. And that's because if you're making any cuts, so for example, let's just undo that. Uh, if I cut here with both of these, 
and then we just drag this here uh, and put these like this. Say we want to shorten this piece here. Well, because we've made this cut, uh, this little strip is not the full length of the video or the content, which we can see by our offsets. And so the speed control is going to, at least in previous versions, I haven't tested it out in 3.2, but at least in previous versions, the speed control is going to calculate the entire content and it's gonna give you really weird results. So what I always do instead, let's turn those off because they're annoying. Um, what I always do instead is just control G, put that in a meta strip, and you can see the content of the meta strip is actually just uh, this here. So that's what the speed control is going to read. So Alt O and let's pull this back down here. And then now I can add a speed control here and you always want to drag from the end handle and pull in towards the beginning. It doesn't also work again in previous versions. It doesn't work when you pull from the beginning and you, you shorten it like this. That's also going to give you uh, some undesired results. You want to pull from the end handle in and then that should speed everything up. And so you can see that does, but um, it's not going to speed up your audio. You can't do a speed control from my knowledge to the audio. That's There's another way to speed up that and that's just your pitch. You have to adjust your pitch. I'm not going to go over that again here, but um, that's just food for thought here. And you can see that's going really fast. Uh, same thing if we want to, if we want to lengthen it or make it go slower you know we've got to double double that here or um, pull it out so like yeah. that's one okay and let's we'll just get rid of that so now it's going really slow okay so yeah i hope that makes sense another thing you want to check is make sure you come to playback here and sync is to audio instead of play every frame or frame dropping sync to audio is the best one at least from my experience. Okay, so I hope that helps. I don't know if it's going to solve your particular problem with your video because uh, something that you did show where the video looked like it should have gone all the way through and it just, it stopped and it was blank. Uh, that could be just a problem with the video. So this is where handbrake is gonna help you like 10 to 10 was saying. But I'm glad you asked because this is a very important question. I'm gonna actually make a video out of this because I certainly don't want people being frustrated that they can't even import video to even get started. All right, so I hope that clears up some confusion about how Blender's video sequence editor works with frames per second and audio and video strips. And remember, this weekend, live stream, me video editing live, answering your questions if you give me a super chat. I go through my whole tutorial editing process, part one, two, and three this weekend. Again, this Friday, August 12th, 2 p.m. Central Daylight Time. That same day, 7 p.m. is part two. And part three is the next day, August 13th at noon. The links to these are already in the description, so go check those out. And I hope you can join me then. And if you do, then you will see me this weekend.